Okay, gamers, I really appreciate you here joining me tonight for our first class of Chat PvP 300, which we're going to be studying the derivation of effective insults within the confines of Orwellian control. This class will be taught over the next couple months and we'll focus on different case studies within different systems and metas so you can best flame in a way that is both effective, enjoyable, and completely legal within each system. So let's get started. So what really is chat PvP? Well, it's a pastime enjoyed by most. You ever wake up and you go downstairs and then your siblings are already in the bathroom so you knock on the door saying hurry up and they tell you to kill yourself and now you say that's why mom's made you an accident and it devolves into normally a fist fight but it's something that's deeply ingrained within the human psyche. Of course it is found in most forms of human interaction. Of course if you're uh, decimate Ted at work makes some passive aggressive comment in reference to your hair, you might, I don't know, mention to his wife at the office party that he's been making eyes at Sharon from accounting for like the past six months, and despite the fact that he's married, he doesn't wear his ring at work. Now, sports games other than the office is of course a great place to find this getting in an argument with your fellow man over which sports team is less gay even though it's a game about men in tight pants and let's face it there's no reason baseball players but should look that good movie theaters of course if you're a scumbag who for some reason wanted to get blackout drunk at an imax you could get into an argument with someone because their kid's kicking your seat. A completely appropriate reaction to have in that situation. Social media is ripe. It was basically built with chat PvP in mind because isn't chat PvP just another form of engagement? So of course, once you're in an open and public forum, there's going to be grounds for disagreement. And with that, you're going to start brawling. And of course, online video games, same thing with social media, it's already competitive in nature. Somebody might say, you're not that good at top laning, you'll say, that's crazy, your mom's amazing at top. And it'll just go off from there. I can go on and on and on, but we'll stop there for the examples. From the beginning of time itself, we really have had a bunch of different iterations of this sort of chat PvP, going all the way back to near the Renaissance. Uh, with our good friend Dante Alighieri, which he actually said this, this is a recorded quote, uh, you're talking mad shit for someone who's gonna be hung in Kanto 13. I didn't have to count that one out, I just know... Greek? Roman? Greek? I just know letter numbers, I'm that smart. But you can see that since 1265, we were already talking shit through text before we could even argue. So he was some sort of like, I don't know, funky jester based on his hat, and some politicians didn't like him, so instead of, you know, confronting them, he wrote fan fiction and just put them in in shit positions, which is the pinnacle of chat PvP being passive aggressive by not even seeing the other person face to face. And lastly, kind of skipped over this one, my apologies, but it can help bolster the mind. Think about it. Dante was so irritated with his other confidants and his co-workers that he wrote an entire book. Think about it. You saying something mean in a league chat could lead to you writing a book of your own, or if you're American, becoming a senator. Let's move on. So, before we get into anything funky, we, got, we of course have to start at the basics. We must avoid breaking the rules because it doesn't matter if you quote unquote own someone if your account's banned. Also, if you're a moral type, you don't really want to be me. We're going to try and bend the rules and work around them. We're someone within the system, not trying to really fix it or change it, we have to work within the rules created for us, you know. That's part of the game, really. We have to also understand that it's not going to be the same kind of code of conduct depending on where you're at. So League of Legends, you might be able to say some stuff that might not fly in Overwatch. And if you're playing TFT, you should just, you know, not say anything. It's TFT, it's a silly doll playing game. If you're playing TF2, one letter difference but completely different arenas, you probably shouldn't be there. You should be in an insane asylum. I heard Zoloft's great, and with Great RX, you can get like a good discount on it. I'm not sponsored. You have to also find your center. Sun Tzu in the Art of War states, damn, this book is long as fuck. 
I know for a fact that people are going to read this in the future just to be insufferable, but what he really meant by that was you must find your center to make sure that you are as peaceful as possible and make sure that your enemy is as angry as possible. That way you are a sound mind where their mind has the sound of monkeys bashing on cymbals as he furiously types and gets his account banned. Now it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. For example, that last slide, I would forgot which the letter numbers came from. Mm-hmm, that's words. And instead of saying that I was incorrect about this, which I was, I'm pretty sure it was Roman numerals, I just kept going because nobody can stop me. I'm not wrong as long as I don't say that I'm wrong. Double, triple, quadruple down. And of course, you cannot make a spelling error. Now, me myself being an intellectual, I refute the idea of spelling. Words are language, and language in itself is art, and art is like jazz, and jazz is free form and flowing. Why must we be bound to these errors online? Well, it's just conduct, it's just the way things are, and is the moment you make a spelling error in the internet, your argument's null and void. So you're going to want to work to make sure to minimize the amount of spelling errors that can happen, and maybe read over what you're going to type a couple times. You see, uh, Murphy's Law is actually a misspelling of Murphy's Law, which states if you're trying to tell someone that they're doing something wrong, there's more than a high chance that you're just going to make a spelling error yourself. Lastly, make sure to keep this simple. We don't need to type up a paragraph because there's more chances that you could maybe make a misspelling or say something where you can just say in two words what you could need 14 for. If I wanted to say to someone, hey, you're really bad at the game and I'm a lot better than you, I could just say instead, skish you, skill gap, I'm better, L plus ratio. Easy small words still has that punch. You have to be creative. If you just keep saying the same recycled thing, like saying these nuts all the time, it's not gonna be funny, it's not gonna be memorable. But if you say, you seem like the kind of guy to heat up your crayons before you eat them, that's weird, that's funky, that's gonna stay in someone's head. They're gonna wonder, what could you possibly mean by that? And that's what we want. And going off of creativity, we want it to be memorable. We want it to stick with them, we want, it, we want to haunt the people who were in chat pvp with and of course honor before death that goes back to the whole doubling down thing if you're wrong i skipped it again doesn't matter i am doubling tripling quadrupling down that this is the order that i wanted in the first place now this is an example of league of legends code of conduct and it means nothing uh basically the entire gist of that is just don't use slurs but we'll get there later so to start we'll do some crowdsource examples. We'll start with something simple. I can tell by the way that you type that you're fat. Interesting. Let's let's analyze this for a second, okay? It's what, maybe 10, 12 words long, each one being about three, two to three letters long, so it's short, it's concise, but it minimizes the chances that you can really make an error here in terms of how you type this. Uh, is it creative? I'd say so. I don't know how you could really tell if someone's fat by typing, so it's it's a little different. It's a memorable indeed. In fact, I saw this one in work myself, and uh, the moment that was put into all chat, I've never seen so many slurs. It would ban the entire team the very next day. It was insane. Of course, since it's mainly smaller letters, this is a lot easier to type, and I'd say four out of ten. It's effective, but it's a little easy. Okay. The next one, you're the kind of guy to let your piss cool before you drink it. Interesting. Let's let's really mull this one over. This isn't anything really different than what we talked about before. It's very creative. Who would is there a correct temperature to let piss cool before you drink it? I, I don't know, I don't think so. I'm not in the piss drinking business why are you drinking piss in the first place again another amazing question so this is definitely weird if not creative this is very memorable because this is something that haunts you there's so many pieces that just don't click together that just stick with you and you kind of can't let it go you know is this easy to type it's a little on the longer side but still not too many big words not too long pretty to the point again I get this, it's a pretty good, it's a, it's a workhorse, you know, but it's a little gross, but it still does the trick. 
All right, lastly, my personal favorite, skish you plus can't read plus no dorsal flexion. Interesting. Is this creative? This just seems like a couple words strung together, so maybe. Is it memorable? Again, it's just a couple words together, so maybe. Is it easy to type? I, <laughs> dorsal flexion is kind of long, there's an X in there, so I'd say not, but again, 10 out of 10. This is a perfect phrase because it's only a couple words long. Get straight to the point. It says everything and nothing at the same time. All right, I think we are ready for our quiz. This is very important. I wanna make sure that we're on the same page in terms of our learning. Of course, this isn't gonna be like completely graded, but it is going to be completely graded. So be careful, all of this will be on the midterm. Now. If you were in a game of League of Legends and immediately you see that you have a Teemo support, interesting. Upon explaining to the Teemo that he is about as sharp as a sphere when it comes to intelligence, he retorts with, I will play what I want, screw you. Interesting. What will you say in response? Okay. A. Well met, good sir. I did not consider the circumstances nor your plight. I admire your conviction and may it carry us to victory. The fact that you continue to breathe air against the wills of natural selection is appalling. A slur, Yamama followed by banning Timo, or the super special secret option. Interesting. Go ahead and pause it here if you want to mull this one over. Um, give you a little bit. All right. So the correct answer was B. C. We could also do D as well because they're both effective, but. B has less of a chance of tilting your teammates. See, since you're in a situation where the person who you're in chat PvP with is on your team, you still want to assert your chat PvP dominance, but without making them feel like their dominance is threatened. So you can be a little rude here, but you're not gonna wanna directly inconvenience them by banning Teemo. The first option is weird. I don't know why you would be polite to someone who's playing Teemo, they're subhuman. Uh, but it doesn't really show your dominance. It's like you're kind of rolling over on your back and showing that you are, you know, a bit of a beta cuck. And that's not what you want. You need to show a strong front. Uh, C, of course, is awful. That goes back to the trying to stay within the rules of everything. You don't want to do that. That's also uncreative and it's unmemorable. You got to mix it up and E will get to later. All right. Next one. Next one. <laughs> You're about two minutes into a game of Overwatch, your Genji has dove into the enemy team with no one near him and is now pinging healing incessantly. Naturally, you drop everything and immediately get down on your knees for forgiveness and to be humbly placed into the Genji's eternal service. Okay. Reply with the Genji's mother's IP address in chat in addition to a link of a picture of his childhood home. Walk directly behind the Genji asking every now and then in chat if he needs healing, but never actually healing him. Interesting. And skish him. And last but not least, the super special secret option. Alright, give you a little bit of time here. Go ahead and pause if you need more. So, right off the bat, we can get rid of A. Remember, we're not trying to be nice, we're not trying to be friends. Can't really do B. That. It's a bit much, we're not doxing people, we're, we're here to show our intellect and our cunning and our creativity, uh, not our ability to speed run being on the FBI's watch list. C kind of gets us in the right direction, but since that's technically spam, I don't know if that really gets into territory where your account could be restricted, so maybe, maybe not, you're gonna have to kind of feel that one out. Uh, D is actually a correct option here, because it's short, this is the point, it's not super creative, not super memorable, but it gets your point of cross without making any spelling errors, which I myself never do as evidenced by this slide. And of course, E, you're scrolling through TikTok and you see a video with a very hot take, probably something about the order in which you put milk into a bowl for cereal or something, and you decide to leave your two cents. A little later, someone responds to your comment saying only a loser would put their cereal in a bowl before the milk. Enraged, you reply with, By the will of the nine, I will hunt your bloodline down. None bequeathed to this earth from you, nor your partner's loins, will know the sweet air of peace for longer than their first breath. They feel the fiery engulfing smite that is revenge. May your elves be plentiful and your bitches few. Okay, yeah, that's reasonable. Their IP address 
L plus ratio plus didn't ask plus dead grandma and not the super secret special option. I'm gonna give you a little less time. I feel like this one's a little bit easier. Um, if you chose A, nice try, dwarf. Go back in the mines. I know you're here. Leave. We don't like your kind here. Uh, B, that's kind of a neutral response. You're better off just saying nothing. C, again, we're not trying to speedrun being put on a watch list, so we can't do that. E, I'll accept as the correct answer for this one. And D, I will accept as well. It's short, sweet, and to the point. So, with that, of course, if you got anything less than four correct, I'm going to need you to look at the link in the description for more support. Uh, that links to some uh, other uh, extra external uh, information and resource that I think would be very helpful in your understanding. But if you got three correct, you'll do all right in this course. If you got two, you'll probably have to come to office hours. If you only got one correct, the hounds are already on their way. And if you only selected the third option, again, Zoloft's not that expensive these days, or maybe just microdose meth, dealer's choice. Now, with that being said, I'd like to thank you all for your time tonight. And if you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll get to them when I feel like it, all right? Well, I once again thank you very much for your interest in this course and hopefully I will see you again soon in the next lecture.